Okay, hi. So today I'm going to talk to you about self-funding an undergraduate degree. The reason why I'm self-funding my degree is because this is my second undergraduate degree. I did an undergraduate degree from 2008 to 2011. So, um, and this means that I am unable to access uh, student finance because I already have a degree. The reasons why I want to do this degree um, are outlined in another video that I will put a link to somewhere. The options available to me in order to be able to study physics as an undergraduate degree were boiled down to open university, part-time or full-time. The open university is very flexible and a lot cheaper and I could secure funding for that. Part-time is a lot longer, not cheaper, uh, but I could secure potential funding for that so it would be cheaper in the short term. Um, full time is the ideal scenario but it is expensive. So after a lot of thinking back and forth and discussion with friends and family I decided to go ahead with the full time course which means funding the fees upfront myself. So before I started I had about £2,000 in my savings account um, and that covered more or less the first 25% of nine grand. £2,225 were due in October, um, another 25% is due on the 6th of February and then there's 50% due in May. So I've paid the first 25%. Now my family are helping me with um, a small loan that is essentially covering, almost covering my rent. My rent is quite low because my boyfriend owns his house. Other things like transport costs, I live just outside the university so I don't have any transport costs because I cycle or walk. Food, because there's two of us cooking, it's cheaper anyway um, and we try and cook very cheaply. We spend about £100 a month or I spend about £100 a month on food. I try and keep my spending limited to food, which means making my own lunch, taking tea to, to lectures, etc. Any extra that I make goes towards my fees. Um, I allow myself some luxuries I suppose in the form of half price movie tickets maybe once a month. So apart from paying my rent I also need to feed myself which I've already mentioned costs about £100 a month and I need to pay the rest of my fees. So I've paid 25%. I've got about £1,000 at the moment to put towards the rest of it. £500 of that is a student overdraft that I will get every year. So I'm seeing that as a short term interest free loan. If I need to or if I can I will open a second student bank account in order to access a second student overdraft but I don't want to have too much money to pay back so that it's unrealistic when I do start earning. On top of that I work part time during term time, 8 hours a week is about £10 an hour so it brings in about £80 a week. Um, that more than covers my food and anything left over goes towards my fees. Now beyond this there are longer holiday periods. Christmas I think is going to be difficult because there's a whole, there's a week or so where you're with family uh, and I've also got to revise for exams but I'm hoping that there'll be at least a two week period that I can sort of pick up extra work that I'm not doing already. Easter is a month and the summer is a three month period so both of those I am hoping to either find full time admin work or I am looking for internships that are related to my degree because then I feel like killing two birds with one stone so I'm sort of honing my skills as a future physicist uh, but also earning money in the process so I can pay for my fees. Now beyond that I take on extra work as and when I can. Um, I have done babysitting, I have done market research, I've recently been contacted by the communications department at the university to do some vlogging for them and that would bring in about £10 an hour. Um, things like that are that either don't take much time or that take a lot of time but it's something I'd be doing anyway like making a video I see as a bonus. And the reason why I'm making these videos is to improve public speaking skills uh, and my general communication skills. So I see that as beneficial to my degree uh, and my future career. So that's quite important and I'm happy to take on work like that. So I'm going to chase up all the contacts I have, see what that brings my way. I'm really interested in outreach and communication anyway so I see that as a bonus. Um, and, and then I've got to sort of count my pennies and, and see what's coming in. Maybe after I've paid my second 25% in February I'll have a better understanding of where I'm going for the rest of the year. I have a massive spreadsheet that I will 
post somewhere so you can have a look um, that sort of details what's coming in, what's going out uh, and whether I'm sticking to it or not. The only obstacle I can see at the moment is the 50% that's due in May. <laughs> the downsides of self-funding, if that doesn't sound hard enough, <laughs> are family commitments, friends, etc. Having previously been on uh, a good enough wage that I could put some savings aside means it's harder now to go out and do what my friends are doing. Being strict with my money and what I do and how I spend it is a lot easier than it would be saving for something I didn't care about. So beyond this year, um, if I want to continue with my degree, I'm going to have to fund another three years. That's going to be a huge obstacle, especially as the workload becomes more intense. At the moment, I'm being quite strict about when I work during turn time because I don't want to disadvantage my studies in any way. But mostly, I'm trying to enjoy my degree, uh, get the best marks that I can, and you know, finish this year and be able to progress and go on to the physics degree because that's the most important thing. If any of you watching this are self-funding as well, or if you're thinking about it and you want to have a chat, please comment below or uh, I'll include an email address if you want to contact me personally. Um, I'd be happy to discuss. And anyone who's thinking about it, good luck.